Now, I never made a how to fix it video on the carburetors. So this is off my wife's car. Your uh, 600 sedan and coupe carburetor. And uh, I was running it on seven year old gasoline and it wouldn't idle too well. So I'm taking it apart and I'm gonna put new uh, O-rings in, in it and see if it, the uh, idle jet's all dirty. Take all the bottom screws out. If your screws are damaged or ugly, I sell uh, screw, screw kits on uh, eBay. I think they're like 15 or 18 bucks. And you want to do it over a pan because all the gasoline is going to run out. Let's see what it looks like inside. Huh. Not too bad. I heard something hit the floor. I think it's that aluminum. Uh, yeah. These little aluminum things that uh, go in the bottom of the carburetor, don't lose them. There's only one, so don't lose it. That thing's still good. Amazing. It looks like an original one. It's not one of the uh, aftermarket. And to get the jets out, all you do is these two jets here. You just put your fingers under here and lift up while you're wiggling. And you want to replace these O-rings here. There's one on the main jet and there's one on the uh, pilot jet. Then underneath this rubber plug, is the idle jet. So you want to pull that out. That thing's still soft too. I might have rebuilt this thing back back when I first got the car, I don't know. And the so the idle jet that you want to take out and clean is in this passage here and, and sometimes they, they're hard to get out so I sell new ones if you bugger it up. And the important thing is get a screwdriver that fits exactly. This one might fit. I'm pretty sure this one fits. There. And then clean this one. I use a bicycle cable. It's like a bicycle cable from a 10 speed bike. And you free it all out so you've got one strand. Only need like this fine of a wire to run through there. Yeah, I can't see anything through it, so let's see. Just rotate the jet while you're putting the wire in. This is a number 40 jet. What you want to do is here's where that here's where that uh, goes that oops, piece of aluminum block there. And then to get this this out, I these little baby hammers I made from my dad for model airplane making. It's not coming out, so let's try this side. All right. Stupidly, I forgot to hit record, so I did get the the float off. Float goes here. That came out. I'm gonna take it out the rest of the way, and then this is screwed in with a. This is the valve to let the fuel in. And it's screwed in with a bracket and a Phillips screw. Take those two out, pull this out. It's got an O-ring on it and it has a filter on it. 
a little pre-filter besides your other one. This one's got a bunch of aluminum shavings in it. So, I don't know where that's coming from. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is change the accelerator pump. Diaphragm, and you got to do a couple things to get it out. There's a cotter pin here. You got to pull this cotter pin out. There. Tiny thing. And when you push this out, it's careful there's washers, little tiny washers in here. There's one there, and I think there's one on the other side. This is the shaft, and check out for wear. Okay, so there's a washer on this side, and there's a washer on the inside. Let's take those out. We need a number two Phillips screwdriver. Take the three screws out holding the uh, accelerator pump in. Here's the old one. If you're going to use it again, you want to make sure it doesn't have any cracks in it. Most of these are rock hard. This one doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to put a new one in anyway. Alright, so when you get my new uh, accelerator pump, they're a little bit uh, large. They fit, but they're, they're a tight fit. So, put your spring in first. Then the accelerator pump. It, the spring goes in that little recess there. And I got a part that I had a plated ahead of time, so I'm putting that on. Number two Phillips screw. Screwdriver. in all right so the way I get the old jet uh, o-rings off is I just cut them with a razor blade because they're usually rock hard and, and they're, you're not going to be able to peel it off with a with a screwdriver or something and then you put the new one on um, if you lubricate it, it might help, but put it over the smallest end, and then stretch it into place. If you buy the new uh, float valves, it comes with an O-ring already on it. Hey, look at that. A little helper. All right. You put that back on, and then press this back in. I'd suggest some lubrication on that O-ring, get it to go in. I like silicone grease. All right, so I got that thing back in. Some silicone grease on it, and went right in with the little pliers. And then put on the, the hold down bracket and the screw. And this hold down bracket's got a curved side, has a spring. So the curved side goes up, so it pushes tension on it. Takes number two Phillips screwdriver. And 
And that totally destroyed my axle for the float, so I'm going to put a different one in. Needle for the float. The springy side goes toward the float. You set it in there. And you put the float back on. And like I said, I had to get a different axle because mine was destroyed. Yeah. That goes in there like that. And give it a little tap. And we get the other jets out and change the O-rings the same way. Just cut them off the razor blade. And put the new one on. And that was a 150 jet. Somebody, it's stamped around the center. Normally they're stamped at the top. So that one's on. And these ones, you still want to look through them. I'm going to go blow air through it. We don't have an air compressor. Air duster in a can works really good for certain things. It might help you out for the cleaning the jets out. And then the new one is super, super tiny. Put it on. Can't even see it. I need to get my magnifier. Don't forget to put your little pill back in. Somebody called it and they called it a pill, so I don't know what it's called. I reuse my float pole gasket because it's in good shape. And I'll put some uh, silicone grease on these too. Just help them go in. Alright, then you want to put the uh, idle jet back in, goes in here, and just tighten it till it stops, don't over tighten it, and put the rubber plug in, I'm going to use the same one because it's still in good shape. And then the two jets. Snapped in. Then what holds them in is when you put the float bowl on, it pushes against these ears. And it holds the jets in from falling out. You put the float bowl on. I got it all cleaned out. And I'm going to use the same screws in it.
new carter pin. I got the new ring on. It's got this gummy stuff on it. Might be part of the old uh, stopper. So you screw this one back in. Flat blade. So it stops and then back it off one and a half turns. And this O-ring, it's about a quarter inch ID, it goes right there when you put the accelerator to pump, accelerator to pump, it goes right there when you put that valve, shut off valve, the anti-dieseling valve that goes on the side of the carburetor, we just call it solenoid. Alright, so that's how you replace the O-rings in the carburetor. Alright, here's how the other uh, O-ring goes. It goes on this solenoid here. You just want to pop the old one off. Pop the new one on. So it's all flat. Probably be okay, but I'll put a new one on anyway. Put that on and put the carburetor back on. Alright, here it is idling again. You can see the accelerator pump works. 